Hello everyone and welcome to Marvelous Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about one of the most common and prevalent disease that is present in the entire world and which leads to some of the most important mortalities and which is known as hypertension. So in this video, we'll talk about what actually is hypertension, what are the clinical features of hypertension, etiology, pathophysiology, management and then finally, we'll talk about the complications which might develop if the hypertension is not properly managed. So let's get started. Now hypertension is a medical condition which in layman terms is known as high blood pressure. Now hypertension mostly develops when there is deposition of plaque in these arteries because these arteries are carrying blood to different parts of the body. When there is for example deposition of plaque here, the diameter of the artery is decreasing. When the diameter of this artery decreases, the blood flow in these arteries is disrupted and which leads to increase in blood pressure. So there is persistent high blood pressure in these arteries. Now there are two blood pressure readings that we mostly take. The first is systolic blood pressure which is when the blood is actually moving out of the heart and the second is diastolic blood pressure when the heart is in a relaxed state and it is being filled with blood. Now the systolic blood pressure in which hypertension is mainly diagnosed and which is the cutoff value is 140 and for diastolic blood pressure it's 90. Now the population that is most commonly affected by hypertension is the late adulthood but during these recent times any age group can be affected by hypertension so that is to be kept in mind. Now there are different types of hypertension which is present and it is categorized by American Heart Association. The normal blood pressure in systolic is less than 120 and diastolic is less than 80. Now the elevated or pre-hypertensive phase of hypertension is when the systolic is ranging from 120 to 129 and the diastolic is still less than 80. The stage 1 of hypertension when the patient has actually been diagnosed with hypertension is when the systolic blood pressure ranges from 130 to 139 and the diastolic ranges from 80 to 89. Now as the hypertension is not controlled it reaches the stage 2. In stage 2 hypertension the systolic blood pressure is now 140 or higher and the diastolic blood pressure is 90 or higher. Now the dangerous situation that the patient suffering from hypertension is when they develop hypertensive crisis. In this case you have to consult your doctor immediately and the diagnostic criteria for hypertensive crisis is when the systolic blood pressure is greater than 180 and the diastolic blood pressure is greater than 120. So this, this classification has been provided by American Heart Association to classify different types of hypertension and patient is really important so that patient can be managed properly. Now talking about etiology there are basically two types of hypertension. The first is primary hypertension which is the common one and 90% of the population is suffering from primary hypertension and the second is secondary hypertension which is accounts for 10% of the patients suffering from hypertension. Firstly talking about primary hypertension. Primary hypertension the blood pressure is elevated. There is high blood pressure but the cause is not known in this case. It's just that the patient has high blood pressure and this is primary hypertension. In cases of secondary hypertension the patient has high blood pressure but the cause here is known. Now the difference between primary and secondary hypertension is that both have high blood pressure but in primary the cause is not known but in secondary hypertension the cause is known. Now there are different causes that might lead to secondary hypertension most commonly we have renal diseases for example patients suffering from renal artery stenosis then Cushing syndrome some brain tumor which is pressing against some arteries in the brain which can lead to hypertension sleep apnea and cirrhosis because cirrhosis liver also has an important role in controlling blood pressure cirrhosis can also lead to secondary hypertension so these are the two basic types of hypertension where it is important to classify and then manage appropriately. Now there are certain important risk factors that the patient might have with chance of developing hypertension. The first and most commonly is age. As the person ages, the artery they become more stiffer and there is also increased deposition of plaque in these arteries and these things then further lead to increased chance of developing hypertension. Second we have some habits that might lead to developing of hypertension is alcohol because it affects most of the organs of the body and so second is smoking. Smoking literally affects all of the organs of the body regardless of the and most commonly it affects the heart because it increases the chances of developing plaque in these arteries which leads to high blood pressure. Patients suffering from diabetes, mellitus, they also have increased chances of developing hypertension.
when you take excessive salt excessive salt also leads to increased water retention by the kidneys and when the blood volume increases it leads to increased chances of developing hypertension gender also has an important effect of developing hypertension family history most commonly if a patient has a family history of hypertension the patient is likely to develop hypertension so it's important to have a certain lifestyle that decreases the chance of developing hypertension obesity is a known cause of many diseases and hypertension is one of them sedentary lifestyle for example patient is not physically active not exercising much has high carbohydrate diet intake salt intake so that leads to increased chance of developing hypertension and lastly and importantly we are stressed patients who do not manage their stress appropriately they have increased blood pressure because their hormones for example epinephrine and cortisol their levels is increasing which leads to increased chances of developing hypertension now talking about the pathophysiology that is what's the exact reasons and processes that leads to developing of hypertension the normal blood pressure is maintained by four processes first is sympathetic nervous system then we have vascular endothelium the renal system and lastly endocrine system firstly talking about sympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system plays an important role when it detects the blood pressure of a patient has decreased so it leads to release of certain hormones and factors that leads to increase in heart rate and heart contractility that leads to normalization of blood pressure second we have vascular endothelium then when the vascular endothelium detects that the blood pressure of the patient has decreased it releases certain vasoconstrictors or so for example nitric oxide and we also have endothelin so when they detect that the blood pressure is decreased these factors really lead to increase in blood pressure third we have renal system the renal system has renin angiotensin system which end product is angiotensin 2 which leads to normalization of blood pressure lastly we have the endocrine system in endocrine system it the end product formation is aldosterone aldosterone leads to increase in sodium and water retention and this leads to normalization of the blood pressure now when the patient has been suspected that the patient might be suffering from hypertension there are certain clinical features that the doctor looks for when trying to reach a definitive diagnosis the most dangerous symptom that the patient might have is actually having no symptoms of hypertension that's why it is known as silent killer so the patients who are like for example above 40 they should regularly have their uh, blood pressure checked so that they are less prone to develop the complication if they are silently suffering from hypertension so that's really important now the visible or the patient's signs and symptoms that the patient tells us is having a severe headache blurry vision dizziness nausea and vomiting chest pain shortness of breath irregular heartbeat and confusion epistasis now these are certain and most common features that a patient presents to us when there is a suspected case of suffering from hypertension so these clinical features are really important and they should be looked for in a suspected case of hypertension now when trying to reach a definitive diagnosis of hypertension there are certain diagnostic tools that we have to keep in mind when trying to reach a diagnosis firstly a proper history and physical examination of the patient has to be done so that we can look at the proper clinical features of the patient and to have an appropriate history of the patient for example if a patient has family history of hypertension then we might suspect that the patient might be suffering from hypertension having certain underlying diseases that are cause for secondary hypertension they should also be learned upon now medical history of diabetes is also important because patients suffering from diabetes they have an increased chance of developing hypertension complete blood count is also important having chest x-ray is also important so that the heart size and the adjacent vessels can also be looked upon and finally we also have to get an ecg done of the patient so that we can check the normal rhythm of the patient the heart rate and the heart contractility and the electrical activity of the heart can also be judged by an ecg so these diagnostic tools are really important when we are trying to reach a definitive diagnosis of hypertension now the patient has been diagnosed with hypertension and the management program now has to be started for that patient now the management mainly depends on which type of hypertension the patient is suffering from either its patient is pre hypertensive stage 1 stage 2 or patient has pregnancy induced hypertension or hypertensive crisis the types of hypertension mainly leads to the management treatment of the patient there are two types of management that are employed the first is lifestyle modification or lifestyle modification and it is really important regardless of having any stage of hypertension lifestyle modification has to be employed by the patient first 
there should be weight reduction. Salt reduction should also be present because increased salt intake leads to increased chance of further exacerbating the problem of hypertension. Alcohol intake should be decreased. Exercise is really important for patients suffering from hypertension as well as diabetes. And proper stress management is important because if there is no proper stress management, the blood pressure tends to remain elevated. Now, on the second hand, when the lifestyle modification is not sufficient for the patient, we go for pharmacological therapy for that patient. Now, there are different classes of drug that we employ. Firstly, we have diuretics. In diuretics, they basically lead to decrease in salt intake. So, there is increased excretion of water from the kidneys, which leads to decrease in blood pressure. The examples we have in diuretics are chlorothiazide and furosemide. Next, we have beta blockers. In beta blockers, they basically decrease the heart rate and heart contractility, which leads to decrease in blood pressure. The examples that we have is etanolol and metoprolol. Then, we have alpha blockers, which also decrease in blood pressure, that we have is perazosin. Vasodilators, they basically increase the diameter of these arteries, thereby causing vasodilation and the blood pressure decreases. The examples that we have is nitroglycerin and we also have sodium nitroprusside. The ACE inhibitors, they basically work by decrease in production of angiotensin 2, which basically increases the blood pressure. So when we use ACE inhibitors, it decreases the blood pressure by mainly acting on the kidneys. The examples that we have is captopril and ramipril. And lastly, we have calcium channel blockers, which decrease the contractility of heart and thereby decreasing the workload of the heart and the blood pressure decreases. The example we have is amylodipine. Now, these are different classes of drugs that are helpful in patients for some hypertension, but not all of these are drugs and used in a single patient. For example, if a patient has prehypertensive, we mainly go towards lifestyle modification. But if a patient has stage 1 hypertension, we can use a single drug or combination of drugs. But if a patient has stage 2 hypertension, we most commonly go for combination drugs so that the hypertension can be controlled and we do not develop complications in that patient. Now lastly talking about if the hypertension of the patient is not controlled due to compliance issues, patient not taking the drugs properly, patient not having a proper lifestyle modification, not taking the medicines properly. So all of these things leads to increased chance of developing complications which are the main cause of mortality in a patient suffering from hypertension. The most common complications that the patient might develop is having a stroke which has a really high mortality rate, patient suffering from heart failure because the increased blood pressure puts a really high load on the heart and when the heart is not able to manage such load it leads to heart failure. Sexual dysfunction is also present because of increased blood pressure vision loss because of increased blood pressure around the retinal blood vessels so there are chances of vision loss heart attack is also present because there is increased blood pressure it leads to increased stress in the arteries it leads to increased deposition of plaque and cholesterol and everything inside the arteries finally it leads to blockage and the patient develops heart attack and finally since kidney also has a major role in controlling blood pressure when the blood is not controlled in a proper way kidney diseases and finally kidney failure leads to its end product. So it's really important for a patient with the hypertension to have proper management of their blood pressure in order to avoid all of these high risk and mortality rates complications. So in this video we talked about one of the most prevailing diseases in the world that is hypertension. We talked about what actually is hypertension, what is the etiology of hypertension, the different types of hypertension, the pathophysiology of hypertension as to how hypertension eventually develops. We talked about clinical features of hypertension, then diagnostic tools which are used to reach a definitive diagnosis of hypertension. We talked about the management plan that is employed for the patient to manage their blood pressure properly. And lastly, we talked about the different complications that the patient might have if their blood pressure is not controlled. So I hope this video was useful for you. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.